This is my Unified Dream Machine SE. And this is my GLINET Travel Router. In this video, I'm gonna pair these two devices using WireGuard VPN so that I can access my home network from anywhere in the world by just toggling this one switch. Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Talk with Samir where I talk about anything and everything related to technology in my life. Now normally I don't do too many tutorial videos because there's people on YouTube that are much better at teaching than I am, but this particular one was actually requested by a viewer so I thought, why not? In my last video, I showed off this GL iNet travel router and my favorite feature about this router is the ability to connect to VPN while using public Wi-Fi. And when I say VPN, you can either use it to connect to privacy VPN services like NordVPN or ExpressVPN, or you can set up a VPN server at your home and connect to that VPN server and have all your internet traffic route through your home network. And the latter is actually what I have set up personally, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I achieved this using my Unified Dream Machine SE as the VPN server. Ubiquity really makes this a very easy process. Now, I'm filming this in early 2023, and as of now, what I'm about to show you does not work with the UDM Pro. For some reason, Ubiquity has been really slow to update the software on the UDM Pro. So for now, I believe this only works on the UDM SE. The version of Unify OS that I'm currently running is version 3.0.13, with Unify Network version 7.3.76. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, it's possible that Ubiquity has newer software, so things may move around a little bit here and there. But the overall high-level process should be very similar. One prerequisite that you do need to be aware of is that your UDM SE must be exposed to your public IP address in order for all of this to work. So if you have a modem from your internet provider that feeds internet into the UDM SE, you have to put that modem in IP pass-through mode or bridge mode. If you don't know how to do that, look up tutorials for your specific modem online because it does vary modem to modem and ISP to ISP. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Using a web browser, go to the IP address of your UDM SE. Once you've logged in, go to the network application. And in the network application, click on the settings icon from the toolbar on the left. Once you're in the settings, go to where it says teleport and VPN. And this is where all the magic happens. If you go down to where it says VPN server, this is where we'll be configuring everything. Now, I already have a VPN server set up and it lists it here. But if you're doing this for the first time, you won't have anything listed here initially. But we're gonna click on create VPN server to bring up the server configuration page. And we have to specify a few things here to set up the WireGuard VPN server. The first thing is the VPN protocol. As of when recording this video, Ubiquiti supports only two VPN protocols, WireGuard and L2TP. On the other hand, GLINET only supports WireGuard and OpenVPN. So we're obviously going to use WireGuard since that's what both of these devices have in common. And also because of performance reasons which I'll talk about later in the video. So once you've selected WireGuard as your VPN protocol, go ahead and give it a network name. It can be anything. I'm just going to call it TechTalk WireGuard. Next, for private and public keys, just leave them as is. No need to change anything there. Then, for server address, it should automatically have your public IP address populated, assuming of course your UDM SC is exposed to your public IP address as I mentioned earlier. Like I said, that is a prerequisite, so if you don't see your public IP address listed there, figure out how to pass through your public IP address first using your ISP's modem. For port, WireGuard's default port is 51820, but you don't have to use the default port. In fact, sometimes it may be advised that you use a different port to make it a little less predictable for any bad actors. So we're gonna set it to 51830. Now the next part is client authentication. And this is where you add clients. A client is essentially any device that will be connecting to your VPN server. In our specific scenario, our client is our travel router. Now, if you don't have a travel router, you can add each of your devices as a client, like your phone, laptop, and tablet. But that's the beauty of using this travel router. It reduces the overhead significantly. We're gonna go ahead and click add a new client. To keep things simple, we're just gonna keep things with auto-generated and give it a name. I'm just gonna call it travel router. Then we need to click download profile. Now, this is the file that contains all the configuration and authentication information for your client. This file is all that is needed to connect to the VPN server. So it's very important to protect this file because if someone with bad intentions gets access to this file without you knowing, they can easily connect to your network. 
So bottom line, download this file and only transfer it to your client using a secure method. Also, for some odd reason, Ubiquity doesn't let you download this after the fact, so you need to download it when you're adding the client. Once you have the file downloaded, click Create User. We're not gonna touch any of the advanced settings and just leave it to auto for this demo. But if you're comfortable, you can tweak things like IP subnet and assign custom DNS servers. But we're gonna leave it as is. And after that, we're just gonna click Apply Changes. At this point, from Unified perspective, everything is ready to go. Now we're gonna configure the GLINet travel router as a client to be able to connect to our new WireGuard VPN server. To do that, you need to connect your computer to the GLINet travel router, either using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Then open a web browser and go to the web interface of the travel router. If you haven't changed it manually, by default the address should be 192.168.8.1. Then go ahead and log in with your password and get to the dashboard. Now just like on the Unify side of things, some of these things may look different over time as they push out new software updates, so keep that in mind. For reference, my travel router's admin panel version is 4.1.2. Anyways, once you're logged in, on the left side, click where it says VPN and click WireGuard Client. Then click Add Manually and give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Home WireGuard. Then on the right side where it says Select a File, we're gonna click there and browse and open the configuration file that we created earlier with Unify. If everything is okay with the file, you're gonna get an upload successful message. After that, click Apply. At this point, you're pretty much all set up. There is one more small setting that we're going to modify to make our experience even more convenient. On the left, click where it says System. Then go to Toggle Button Settings. And we're going to change the Toggle Button function to WireGuard Client on off and hit Apply. What this will do is basically give you a physical button to toggle your VPN connection from the travel router. It saves you the hassle of going into the web interface every time you want to connect. To test the VPN connection, first connect to an internet connection outside of your home. I'm just going to use my phone and tether it to the router. This router does natively support tethering from a cell phone and that's another very cool feature. Once I have the connection established, before I connect to VPN, I'm going to go to Google and type what's my IP address. Whatever IP shows should be different from your home's public IP address, so you're clearly not connected to your home network. After you've confirmed that, go ahead and toggle the switch on the side of the router and then wait a few moments for the VPN connection to establish. If you have the web interface open, you can actually see the connection status there on the VPN dashboard. After that, we're going to once again go to Google and type what's my IP address. And this time, you should see your home's public IP address there. This means that all your internet traffic is routing through your home's internet. If you don't see your home's public IP address, just open an incognito browser session and try again. Because sometimes the browser caches the results of your recent Google searches, so it may not show the updated result. And that's all there is to it. Not only is all your internet traffic routing through your home now, but you can also access your devices that are at your home. Like for example, if you have a network attached storage, you should be able to access your files using this VPN connection. It's really cool that Ubiquity added native WireGuard support on the UDM SE because normally setting up WireGuard server at your home is not this trivial. It usually involves a bunch of command line work in Linux. Ubiquity has made it very intuitive to set up. Also, WireGuard protocol is very impressive when it comes to performance. This travel router can support up to 190 megabits per second using WireGuard VPN, whereas it only supports 28 megabits using OpenVPN. And if you get the higher-end Slate AX model from GLINet, that one can support up to 550 megabits using WireGuard. Now, in this video, I used the UDM SE as my VPN server. But if you don't have Unify gear, you can still host a WireGuard server at home using something like Pi VPN on a Raspberry Pi or a virtualized Linux environment. I actually also have a second backup WireGuard server at home running on a Linux container on my Proxmox server. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about how I achieved that. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. As always, stay safe and I'll see you again on the next one.